Here for centuries lay the vast expanse of Canada, stretching in the words of our national motto, from sea unto sea. Rich in natural resources, a vigorous climate waiting for man, bearing in his hand the conjurer's rod of civilization and industry to turn that untouched domain of yesterday into the flourishing dominion of today. For without its varied and almost unlimited natural resources, Canada could not have gained stature as one of the great nations of the world. Its transportation system of continent-spanning railways. Its lake-to-ocean shipping through lakes that are joined by man-made canals. Its highways for passenger car and transport and its ever-growing air routes that crisscross its land areas and fly the oceans make Canada a country of international importance. Cities have risen with their towering structures of commerce and industry, for Canadian industry is availing itself of a privilege and fulfilling a duty when it regards the wider panorama of this country to which it contributes its record of achievement. The mining industry must have machines to rest the mineral treasures that are deep in the bowels of the earth. Iron from the barrens of northern Quebec and Ontario. Nickel, silver and gold from the age-old Laurentian Shield and the Rocky Mountain area. Uranium from El Dorado. Oil from the foothills. The western prairies give forth the golden wheat planted and harvested by the great machines that industry developed to meet the needs of the grain grower. Or the equipment so necessary for the stockman and the dairy farmer. Or the fruit belt of the Niagara or the Okanagan, for agriculture is an important integral part of this dominion. whose forests are felled to supply their products to the lumber industry and keep in motion the rolls of the pulp mills that send their products to a free and untrammeled press. Its hydroelectric power is carried many miles from the stations that generate it from the energy supplied by a natural waterfall or a man-made dam to our rural areas. our cities and centers of industry, for it was this available and economic supply of electricity that made it possible for Canada's tool and specialty alloy steels industry to have its inception. At Welland, Canada, the first electric tool steel furnace was installed over 30 years ago, and from the first foundation stone, Atlas Steels Limited has developed into a world-girdling industry. Its achievements, domestic and foreign, have become even more outstanding when viewed in the light of the company's geographic location. Under the competitive disadvantage of having its head office and mills situated 1,000 miles from seaboard, it still pioneered a worldwide export trade. By its quality products and fair business practices, it is now one of the world's largest plants exclusively engaged in fine tool specialty alloy and stainless steels. The tool steel industry is a basic industry that all manufacturing in one stage or another is dependent upon. It is the specialty alloy and fine tool steels that are so vital in developing the natural resources of a country. Canada is unique in that with its many natural resources, it is a vast proving ground for testing and improving the tool and specialty steels that are the important factor in its industry. The melt floor, with its roaring electric furnaces and its alert hurrying workers, is an incomprehensible world of sound and fury. But to the steel man, it is the familiar environment of his profession.
The charger of Frankenstein in the hands of its trained operator skillfully maneuvers the raw materials so vital to the making of high alloyed steels into the mouth of the furnace, there to be subjected to the electrical arc that will reduce it into a molten state. Now is the time when the utmost is demanded of the melter's knowledge and the training in his work. His estimation of time, temperature, and materials involved in the making of high-quality steels is of absolute importance, for no chance error can be allowed to mar this valuable output. He follows any one of a number of exact formulae, all of which have been devised by the metallurgist to fill the varied requirements of industry. In the melting of a batch of steel, many chemical changes take place. Therefore, a continuous check is made during each important step in the melting by trained chemists who are responsible for the analysis of raw materials, control of the composition in the furnaces, and reporting their findings to the melter who makes the necessary changes in the furnace to meet requirements. It is the chemist's responsibility also to check the final product. Once it has been determined that the contents of the furnace meet all the specifications, the furnace is ready for tapping. Into the ladle on the pit side of the furnace is poured the molten steel. Even to those long accustomed to the process of tapping, this sight of molten steel pouring forth in fiery brilliance brings a thrill and fascination that experience cannot diminish. Suspended in midair above the pit floor, a giant crane moves the ladle cautiously over to the waiting molds. These large molds are prepared well in advance and are fitted with a special hot top which feeds the ingot as it solidifies and shrinks. When the ingots are solidified, they are hauled by a powerful diesel locomotive to the stripping department. tops have done their work and are removed to be relined and used again. The molds, their contents still hot but now solidified, are lifted over onto the stripper. When they are securely anchored to its floor, a powerful pin now pushes up and loosens the ingot from the mold. They are then ready to be transported to the soaking pits. Its name indicates its purpose, for here in a red cavern of searing heat, the ingot must lie for many hours in order that it may emerge at an even temperature throughout and be ready for further processing. Temperature is thus an all-important factor in making high-grade alloy steels. And these pits have theirs electrically controlled and continually rechecked by observers using a pyrometer. Nothing is left to chance.
From the soaking pits, a conditioned ingot goes to the big press whose mighty jaws clamp down on it with a stupendous strength that forges it into the various shapes it must assume. Ingots, large or small, which are poured from the ladles of the electric furnaces, are kneaded and fashioned with the same ease by this giant press, for all are but straws in its fingers of steel. training have gone into the skill and deftness of touch which these operators show who manipulate the press. And their work is of incalculable importance, for this operation of hot forming steel to the right dimensions necessitates accuracy of control before the simmering metal would lose its plasticity. leave the soaking pits, not destined for the ministrations of the press, but to be rolled into shape by the powerful rolling mill. Back and forth and through they are sent, their progress carefully gauged by the attentive operators in the pulpit. from the rolls, the ingot is now ready for the scarfer, whose excoriating flames clean it of surface scale. Rough ends are trimmed by a cutter, the sharp powerful blades of which can sever the ingot at any desired length. Unseen by the casual observer in a steel mill is the heart of the rolling operation, the motor room which houses the giant motors designed to perform the almost human contortions of the rolling mill at the command of the mill operators. After the ingots from the 26-inch mill have been scarfed and trimmed, they are passed over to the 22-inch mill as billets for further reduction into the specified shape.
to the required size, the billets move along to be hot sawn into shorter lengths. These billets are placed in boxes for slow cooling. After removing from boxes, billets are conditioned for further working by grinding, chipping, or scarping, depending on the chemical analysis. Car-type furnaces for normalizing or annealing. All types of furnaces are available for various heat treatments required by bars, billets, and other shapes. Twin continuous furnaces for conventional or isothermal heat treatments. certain requirements, annealed bars or billets are cut on an automatic cutting machine. For oil or water quenching treatments of bars to definite physical properties, electrically heated furnaces are available. Continuous rotary furnaces are used for heat treating die blocks. sizes of stainless and specialty alloy steels are rolled on the 16-inch, 10-inch semi-production mill. After years of experience in rolling fine quality steels, engineers long associated with the company designed this most modern mill to enable quality production and for the safety of the workers. These mills roll all the smaller sizes of rounds, squares, flats, or other required shapes. Like the larger bars, the production from these mills will be given the specific heat treatment they require. Bars of different sizes then go to the straightening machine before final inspection. of saws trim the ends of the larger flats and rounds. metallurgical control is exercised in every phase of manufacture. Precise equipment is necessary both for testing and research, which is continually carried out by experts in the science of steel making, and more especially these fine, highly alloyed stainless and specialty steels. Intricate microscopic instruments look into the structure of the steel and photograph the findings for further study. From these metallurgical laboratories, formulae are devised for the manufacture of many types of high alloyed industrial steels. For since the practical use of the electric arc furnace in about the year 1910, 
chemists, metallurgists, and research engineers are finding new alloys and new treatments to be used in the making of high-grade steels. Their urge is to improve existing things, to make them serve their users better, and to discover new ways and new things which will fill a want or make life safer. Most people know what an automobile looks like. Little do they know the amount of metallurgical skill and know-how that has gone into the specialty alloy steels for valves, gears, drive shafts, bowl and roller bearings that must be of the best quality to meet the public demand for safety, speed and endurance. Economy begins with the production of these specialty steels. Special compositions are developed which by proper heat treatment will be as hard as the more expensive alloys using rarer metals. Time-saving methods in annealing are discovered. Maintaining uniformity in results, changing physical properties, thus creating a practically new and much improved material. All this for the benefit of the automobile manufacturer and the ultimate owner. Called upon by the marine industry for a steel to withstand oxidation, stainless steel drive shafts was the answer. And alloyed specialty steels essential for the more highly stressed component parts that make up the smaller vessels that ply our inland lakes and rivers. Essential to the electrical industry is high quality magnet steel and stainless steel for the many household appliances and the innumerable other parts that go to make up electrical equipment. No other industry calls for so many different types of fine quality steels. And because Canadians are so conscious of their wealth of electrical power, these steels which emanate from the electric furnaces of Atlas find their way into home, factory, and generating station of some remote section in their country. Agriculture, too, Canada's primary industry, is dependent on the fine quality steels in its steady advance in mechanization. Steel for die blocks that stamp out the thousands of parts for labor-saving machinery that the agricultural implement manufacturer has perfected. Stainless sanitary equipment for the dairyman. Dies that cut the leather for the stockman's saddle. And specialty alloy steels that make up the moving parts of the farm tractor. Each one of Canada's natural resources requires a special steel in its process of being utilized. The mines require hollow drill rods to explore the great mineral wealth or drill bits that can cut through our ancient granite. Excavators and quarriers that dig into the earth or remove the stone that builds our buildings all require drills that are tough and long wearing. The big machines that remove the earth and the rock and smelt the ores, all are dependent upon stainless steel shafting or special alloyed steels to reap the riches of our mines. The forests that echo to the woodsman's axe call upon the skill of the metallurgists to provide special steel for axes to fell the trees. Paper knives for the pulp and paper mills steel to sharpen the saw, and steel for the chisel drill bit and gauge for the woodworker. To build our engines of transportation, railways must have special steel for the stay bolts in the locomotive to withstand the constant vibrations and stress of pounding miles. These and countless other parts must be the product of the electric arc furnace. Airplanes are latest mode of transportation, demanding flawless materials for safety and speed, are dependent upon the steel man to furnish them with steel that will be even better than their specifications require. The home is the repository for the products of hundreds of diversified industries, products of our 20th century mass production, products that require steel somewhere in their making. 
Die blocks that will contain the exact shape of the part to be made must be the utmost in perfection. For no longer in these days of making much for the many is the manual skill of the individual steel carver adequate. And the intricate parts of modern industrial equipment must be forged each in the identical likeness of the other. These die blocks must contain no blemish as many hours of the die worker's time and skill would be wasted. Steel dies cut the softer metal that cans our products of the field and stream. They cut out the many layers of wool and cotton, silk and rayon that are used in the textile industry. Rubber for our truck and automobile tires and the thousand and one articles the rubber manufacturer markets. for the world of chemistry that requires stainless steel that will not corrode or impair the purity of a formula. As Canada has achieved a place for herself in the industrial nations of the world and is among the top ranking producers of raw materials, it is little wonder that a great specialty and fine tool steel industry was developed. For as new things are developed, technology advanced and new information discovered, they will be applied by the research engineers and metallurgists of Atlas who have that unfailing urge to further the conquest of human toil through mechanical ingenuity.